see about Young's modulus. Young's modulus by the statement it states that it is nothing but ratio of longitudinal stress upon longitudinal strain no need to write the short form here it is uh, denoted by capital Y unit for this is Newton per meter square here I have I have written down the assumptions for this as well suppose I have attached this wire with a rigid support so this is rigid support it will have some area of cross section so pi r square the wire is having some original length which is capital L when I attach a weight mg on it it will produce some elongation which is denoted by small l so according to the formula longitudinal formula is nothing but f by a here force is applied which is equal to the mass force would be equal to that f is equal to mg area is nothing but pi r square since the area of cross section now for longitudinal strain formula is increase in length upon original length we just derived it now we will substitute this equation number 1 2 to equation number star so y is equals to longitudinal stress is nothing but mg upon pi r square upon l by l if you get confused by this method you can write it as mg upon pi r square multiply by capital l upon l reciprocate so our formula for young's modulus is capital m g l upon pi r square l this is the formula for bulk modulus or volume strain bulk modulus is depicted by capital k and its formula is nothing but ratio of volume stress upon volume strain here suppose we have a balloon it will have some volume v suppose we exert some amount of pressure which is delta p delta because they are small amount of pressure from all the sides what will happen there will be slight change in the volume so as i have told you earlier volume stress there will be slight change which is v minus delta v which is nothing but v dash remember now let us derive the formula of volume stress which we have already done volume stress is nothing but f by a but here force will be equal to the pressure exerted and how much area is existing and area is capital a so that means a n a just can so that means it is delta p for volume strain it is, it is nothing but change in volume of original volume that is v dash minus v upon v i am doing it right away because we have the, uh, done this already so this is v minus delta v since v dash is v minus delta v new volume minus v upon v uh, plus v minus v gets cancelled so that is minus delta v upon v so let us substitute our equation number one and two in equation number star so what will happen capital k is equals to volume stress so delta p upon minus delta v upon v we can write it as like this delta p into v and delta v so that becomes here there is negative sign existing we will remove this negative sign why because it will show that the volume is decreasing however that the volume is not decreasing it is getting just distributed so this is our main formula now for modulus of rigidity it is depicted by a symbol eta and the formula is the ratio of sharing stress and sharing strain is known as modulus of rigidity we have derived our formulas earlier sharing stress 
बट एफ बाय ए शेयरिंग स्ट्रेन एक्स बाय एच इज इक्वल टू टेन ट्रीटा हियर वी विल टेक दैट वेरी 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 स्मॉल टेन टेन ट्रीटा दैट मीन्स टेन ट्रीटा एंड ट्रीटा नियरली इक्वल सो वी विल सब्सिट्यूट टेन ट्रीटा बाई ट्रीटा सो दर ट्रीटा वुड बी एक्स बाय एच सो वी विल सब्सिट्यूट दिस ईटा इज इक्वल टू वॉट इज शेयरिंग स्ट्रेस एफ बाय ए सो दिस इज अ फॉर्मूला फॉर मॉड्यूलस ऑफ रिजिट पॉइशंस रेशियो इट इज बेसिकली द डिफाइंड एज रेशियो ऑफ लैटरल स्ट्रेन विच इज विच इज कंसिडर्ड बीटा टू लॉन्जिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन वी नो अबाउट लॉन्जिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन बट नाउ हियर वी विल सी अबाउट लैटरल सेम अजम्पन्स दिस इज अ वायर कनेक्टेड टू अ रिजिट सपोर्ट एंड द लेंथ दिस इज द एलोंगेशन प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड कैपिटल डी वॉज ओरिजिनल डायमीटर माइनस डेल्टा डी इज सम डायमीटर विच इज प्रोड्यूस आफ्टर एलोंगेशन फर्स्ट वायर वुड बी लाइक ऑफ सम लेंथ और एक्सटेंशन आफ्टर एलोंगेशन इट गेट्स कॉन्स्ट्रिक्टेड सो इट वुड बी डिपिक्टेड बाय डी माइनस डेल्टा टी अबाउट लॉन्जिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन विच इज अल्फा विच इज नथिंग बट स्मॉल एल बाय एल बट वॉट इज लैटरल स्ट्रेन लैटरली द स्ट्रेन विच इज अकरिंग विच इज नथिंग बट लाइक लॉन्जिट्यूडनल स्ट्रेन एक्सटेंशन हियर इज डेल्टा डी what is the original diameter that is capital d and we will put a negative sign here negative sign depicts that there is decrease in some amount of diameter let us equate it in. so we will substitute these value in sigma it would be beta upon alpha which is nothing but l by l upon let us write it down like that माइनस डेल्टा डी अपॉन डी अपॉन इक्वेशन नंबर वन डिवाइडिंग न्यूमरेटर एंड डिनोमिनेटर बाय टू वी गेट माइनस डेल्टा टी डी अपॉन टू एल अपॉन d by 2 l what is half of diameter radius so this would be minus delta r l upon d by 2 is r r l where r is nothing but cross sectional area this is our ratio this is the experiment for determining young's modulus this this equation has two parts the apparatus and the procedure s is the rigid support from which the two wires are suspended p and q p is the reference wire and q is the experimental wire m is the main scale used to measuring elongation w is the weight pivoted into the pan and v is the vernier scale let us move on to the procedure first efforts would be made that the weights pivoted suspended into the pan of p and q becomes equal and both the wires become equal at the same height then our real experiment begins first not increasing any weight in p with suitable increment weights are kept into the pan of wire q then the elongation would be observed suppose first the wire p has 30 cm length and when we suspend some weight in q wire and there is some elongation produced it reaches to 60 cm so that is difference will tell us what how much is the elongation produced this is how we are going to determine young's modulus of a elongated wire in this experiment we are going to learn about stress and strain and we are going to plot a graph of both of them basically we are studying stress versus strain graph of a wire which is undergoing elongation first is the p point which is proportionality point 
This is a point where stress is directly proportional to strain and it obeys Hooke's law. When we reach to E, E is the elastic limit. This is the limit or the set point up to which the wire has undergone little bit change in dimension. We can bring the original dimension of the wire by returning back. But after this the wire cannot go to its original dimension. Y is the yield point. This is the point where only strain keeps on increasing and st stress doesn't increase. Only the readings of strain, uh, only the readings of strain keep on increasing as you can see here. Then there is a point where wire reaches to point B which is breaking point. This is the point where up to which the wire can bear the maximum stress up to. Then this is the point where wire says enough I cannot bear any much strain after this point. Still if we go on substituting weights and putting the weights into the pan, the elongation will occur and the wire reaches to C point which is breaking point which is the point where the wire can break or fell apart and become so weak that it can be damaged. This point from O to O dash. This is the permanent set which means there is permanent deformation produced in the dimension of the wire. This is the expression for how much energy there is stored in strained wire or the expression can be asked as W is equal to half into load into extension. We have taken a wire and we are extending it by putting weights in increments into the pan. What if the wire is elastic? Then what will happen? If the wire is elastic, it will possess some amount of Young's modulus. What is the formula of Young's modulus? F by A upon L by L. Y is equal to F by A into capital L by L. We can remove how much force is exerted from here. F is equal to Y A L upon L. Let us take it as equation number one. What if the force we are exerting is very small amount of force or the restoring force and elongation produces small then the equation 1 becomes F is equal to Y A X upon L. Here the elongation was small L. Here the elongation is small X. Let this be equation number 2. When we are applying the force and the elongation produced is small then the work done would be also small. Normally we write work as cap capital W, so the small work would be dW is equal to fdx. But what is f here by equation number 2? dW is equal to yx dx. Let this be equation number 3. We know about small amount of work done. Then what is large amount of work? So we can integrate all these derivatives and remove the final work done in elongating the wire integrating 0 to L dW so what is dW yx upon L integration of yx upon L dx since y and L are w is equal to integration of dW yx L are common we will remove them out By applying formula of x raised to n is equal to x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1. What is here we have x. What is the power 1? x raised to 1 plus 1 becomes x square upon 1 plus 1 is 2 upon 2. So this is x square by 2 dx. Then we will substitute ln 0 at the place of x. W is equal to Y A L in the bracket X square by 2 0 and L 1 time L 1 time X so Y A L upon L square by 2 minus 0 square by 2 0 square by 2 is useless so we will ignore this we we get this we can write it as Y A L upon L into L by 2 also Agreed? But what is Y L upon L? It is F. So we will substitute it. W is equal to F into L by 2. We will take 1 by 2 outside. 
this is work is equal to half into load how much force we are putting so load and extension produced so this is proved